I have to pay 10,000 to my brother by the end of this month. I also have to return a 5k I borrowed for the trip. So many transactions. I think I should just get a credit card. Did you know, according to recent industry reports, 22 million Indian consumers apply for credit every month. However, they have been denied credit in the majority of cases due to a poor credit history. Now, given that the millennial population prefers to obtain small ticket loans for short-term, existing lending platforms such as banks and NPFCs find the sector unprofitable. And the lack of a credit history does not help the situation either. Now to address this urban problem, there is an urban solution. Cashy, a digital lending company, developed the social loan quotient SQL, a social behavior based credit rating system that uses big data analytics, artificial intelligence and prediction technologies to calculate your credit worthiness. It basically means Cashy won't just see your past financial transaction but also collect points from your social and media footprint, education, remuneration, career and financial history to calculate the credit source. But is the system fair and unbiased? In an exclusive interview with Analytics India magazine, Yashoraj Tyagi, Chief Technology Officer and Chief Business Officer of Cashy, spoke about how they bring ethics into their platform. It's very interesting to bring up that question because uh, you know uh, there is there is this very uh, like you know uh, and 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 I'm like my personal background uh, also comes from uh, AI in particular and uh, you know having kind of uh, being very abreast of the recent developments in terms of what you see the lot of papers being published is in the domain of explainable AI to see if there's bias coming in AI based models which is very fair but what people do not uh, also kind of uh, very well give cognizance to is the fact that when you talk about traditional lending that you know a lot of financial institutions used to do there is as much or uh, a higher bias that comes in as a result of a human making a decision right like why and like and people like completely ignore that in the fact that like i in fact i think that a uh, machine driven decision approach can give better results not to customers but an organization as well like to, tomorrow if you have um certain npas and if you have left like decisioning to uh, like, you know, a team of like, like say 2000 underwriters that you have, everybody comes with their own bias. This is what works and this is what is right, this is what is wrong. And they put that into the decisions that they make, right? Um, and, and, and uh, uh, you know, I would not go into details of that, but like, I do remember back in the US, I was, I was attending a seminar wherein somebody said that, uh, you know, people who basically, uh, you know, came back from a vacation and joined uh, the bank back had basically got a higher overdue rate in terms of whoever they approved versus other people who are like that because they were just generally in a good mood and they were like, okay, you know, like this can be approved as well. This cannot be approved as well. And, you know, if you think about that, like that is like straight up bias right there, right? So, uh, and that's where I think that's not a problem of ethics, but bias definitely comes in whenever there are humans in the loop. Like there's no denying that. Absolutely. See, uh, the uh, the model at the end of the day is as good as uh, you know the data that it ingests on, right? And uh, it it is very important to make sure that two or three things happen when you have an AI system in place. One is that you need to know when not to use it, right? Um, and and I think that that define this one particular thing defines the success of of the usage of AI in any organization that you should know when to press that red button and stop, right? Uh, what cases your model cannot work on actively. And that, that is extremely crucial, uh, crucial. That's one. And two, to also know that when you are using your AI in a prudent mechanism, but obviously like when can a bias come in? Now, in our case, when we use something like an SLQ to kind of uh, do credit worthiness of a pan-India population. Now, India is, uh, you know, while it is, a one, while it is one country, but the kind of diversity that you see here, is pretty amazing, right? In, th in terms of the fact that the kind of people that can come in, the kind of demographic backgrounds that can come in, is, is 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 has enormous variation. So how do you make sure that the same engine can profile everything without getting biased to something just because it has less data on a certain segment of people? 
and it ends up making wrong decisions. So that is that becomes extremely crucial as well. So both things to tackle, like number one for the first thing, when to put a hard button is that it is important that you have very effective outlier detection and anomaly detection systems in place as well. You need to know that when uh, is a certain customer who comes into your segment is probably unlike or generally unlike most what the model has is been experienced with in, in most of the customers, right? And if you're able to reliably detect that in those kind of cases, you do not put your AI system to use in kind of making decisions on those customers, right? So outlier slash anomaly detection becomes an extremely crucial part of what we do. Second is a model audits to solve the second problem. Model audits in terms of, there's a lot of research that is currently happening in model explainability, uh, you know, that in terms of where we were two years back to right now, I think the world has made tremendous progress on that front. And I think it's important from the point of view of not just, not just explaining your stakeholders internally, but also to do model audits that why was somebody decided on in a, in a certain manner. And, and those model audits should also be automated, right? Uh, in a way that you are able to kind of throw up decisions that you generally thought would not happen. Uh, three, uh, sounds sounds a little primitive, but works like a charm every time that if you have to make certain decisions, you are using your AI model. I know that there's bias in humans, but you also know that uh, you know, it is also okay. It's also good to kind of have comparable decision making between humans and a model on a certain small sample of audit data to see that your model is behaving as per expectations of what a human verifier would also generally do and generally to kind of remove that bias component there. And last but not the least, see, you know that what kind of samples have lesser data on, you have lesser data on, right? And uh, you know that that is susceptible to a certain cause of coming and that is where you know obviously our uh, outlier detection models will become important but in governance in terms of putting human in the loop of just reviewing final decisions of cases where you know you have lesser samples on becomes extremely crucial as well that you know okay just because you have say i have i have i have very few customers coming from say tripura doesn't mean that everybody from tripura gets scored in a certain way like on the platform doesn't happen like that why because you know, I know that that is that is that is that is an area that I have generally not had customers from. So I would not rely on model decisioning for that. And that's a very broad example because it's not like as broad as that. But you know, certain combination of parameters are things that we do not have enough data on. So you know, how do you combat that? You combat that by making sure that a model based decision is not the only thing we're relying on, right? Um, and and that's where um, and that's where I said the last part of it is that. From generally people, uh, you know, implementing AI models in um, startups slash fintech companies, see everybody has a funnel problem. What that means is at the top of the funnel, you have a huge base of people that you have acquired, but you probably kind of service a small segment of that, right? Uh, not everybody who comes on an Amazon.com ends up purchasing something, but like Amazon has still got data on those customers who still not purchase anything from them. There is a policy in which people end up basically running algorithms on data that you have labels on. Right, uh, because it's easy, uh, but but I think that is the, the now we are moving towards a uh, time where people should very seriously work on highly semi-supervised kind of uh, ML model, uh, because so that you kind of leverage data on customers you do not have a label on as well, but you just have still got a behavioral insight into how they interacted with you, so that you kind of 10x your data set that the model is ingesting. Um, and you kind of know that how these customers generally behave and it becomes like, you know, kind of, it, it, it helps you out in kinds of avoiding bias because you kind of like, you know, got a lot more customers in your, in your data set as well. See, I think the idea of ethics is important in any space. Um, Fintech is becoming uh, you know, uh, 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 a talking point just because the stakes are higher, right? Finances of people are very close to them, right? Um, it's 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 a question of AI ethics. Even when I get served an ad on Google, uh, that what is the basis of me getting shown that ad, right? Uh, you know, have the choices or have whatever the model has run on has gauged my personality or my preferences and has it put a bias has the, is there a bias that has crept in there because of me seeing that ad for example right like there's this big thing that you know uh example like you know if 
I just read somewhere that somebody sees fairness cream ads. It does that model thing that you know I like you know I I need that like you know that's that's a that's a that's something like people think about right? like does this thing that I need something else to look good and that's a decision that the model has made at the end of the day that this customer needs to be shown a fairness cream ad. But fintech becomes a lot more important because their finances or people get concerned right. You're making a lending decision using a model right. It impacts somebody's life uh, sometimes in a big way as well. Like they need money and you're making a decision as to whether to give them that or not basis an automated model you're making a decision as to underwrite insurance or not in a certain way uh, to customers right you are making decisions in terms of how do people manage their wealth um, where do people invest their money in and as i said finances of people are very close to them and that is why ethics becomes important because now if machines are making this, those decisions we might as well know that how they are actually working out and making those decisions right in other fields since the stakes are not the highest okay if i see an ad i won't put a lot of thought in that i'll be like okay i might just ignore it but here, you know, something related to my life has been decided on by a machine. And hence, that's why there's a lot more talk about, um, uh, you know, ethics and uh, AI applications in FinTech. No, absolutely, right. And that's why I mentioned that explainability and AI has become a big research area right now. In fact, it's one of the largest research areas, one of the conferences that I attended very recently. Um, you know, I think 70% of the papers being presented were on explainability in AI. Right? And that's where you can understand that is where the industry demand is moving towards. Right? You know, as, as more and more organizations adopt AI, they want to kind of, be, kind of uh, want to be able to reliably explain how has a model made a certain decision, right? Um, so we do use kind of like, you know, the best in class explainability models as well, but that is not enough, right? In the sense that, okay, models told you that this is why it decided something. But as I said, you know, like regular model audits become extremely important in terms of a lot more detail in terms of as much detail as that you, you, you also see that, okay, if there was a human, what decision would they have made that right? understand that there's also a bias comes come, coming from a human perspective, but on an average, if a certain decision that 10 humans would have made on a person, like the model machine should be able to kind of make the same decision or over say a hundred customers that you audit on. So that's one second is that, uh, very importantly that, you know, has a model made a certain decision? So, so, so one thing is also important to know is that you know how similar is a certain sample that you get to most of the samples that you already have, right? And then I can trust the model prediction a lot more. Uh, versus how similar is the if you see that it's only the model like a certain sample that I got is like similar to only one percent of my overall customers. Then I also know that okay, you know, I mean, like there's a certain reliability score that I can also attach to my predictions. And that also becomes a little cr cr uh, crucial that, you know, can, is there a reliability score associated with every prediction that the model makes, right? Uh, because I've got a certain, like certain output, certain score from the model, but what is the reliability of that score? Like, you know, how reliable can I, can it be? And it's very similar, as I said, the model is as, as good as the data. And if a certain sample comes in, it doesn't resemble any data that I have, then obviously the reliability of, of that prediction would be extremely minimal. Uh, and that kind of attaches to the entire anomaly detection thing that I told about. While there are things like zero shot learning and stuff like that out there as well, but there's still like largely research areas and gain, yet to gain production level prominence. Right, right. And, uh, if I may, you did mention that you know you need those regular audits. So how often does it happen uh, at your company, and what does it essentially entail? So it's 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 uh, uh, you know at least once every month. Right. Uh, if not more than that, and uh, it once indicates that uh, because because the thing is that you know, and it's once every month because lending cycles are monthly cycles. You have EMIs hitting you from uh, every month, and it's important to know that how they have how the performance is behaved with respect to how the model predicted. Uh, the like you know the proof of the pudding is in the taste, so you know that okay if a model has performed well, then you can see good performance on your lending books. You know, so that's number one uh, result of it. Now, second is that. Um, if we reject people, uh, for example, then, you know, have the model made the right decisions of rejecting people so that we don't lose business over there, you know, unnecessarily being very strict on lending parameters. So that is another analysis analytics that is done. Then um, over and above that, as I said, you know, model audits in terms of like looking at, uh, you know, customers in terms of lens of human approval versus machine approval, that, that, that is a regular activity that is done in terms, then in terms of, you know, the reliability uh, of the predictions as I was just mentioning, is something that is uh, very seriously looked at um, in terms of how reliable those uh, you know, kind of predictions ended up being in terms of whoever we have made a decision on. 
and last but not the least you know uh, in terms of where all is a human in the loop process actually required right like where you have very thin file data on where you have customers where um, the model is not been able to give a good prediction and did the human in the loop process also kind of ended up giving you a, like you know a good uptick in your business performance because it does not then then also it kind of is a self defeating thing that you know your model was not able to predict well so we put in a human in the loop but if that also kind of doesn't work out well like like what's the point you might as well like kind of rely on the machine prediction itself so those kind of checks are always there stay tuned for more insights and updates from the world of data science analytics and machine learning at analytics india magazine